There are fewer than 100,000 cases of sickle cell disease in the United States annually. Sickle cell disease is a lifelong disease, and the severity varies widely from one person to another. While there are effective treatments that can reduce symptoms and prolong life, our panel of experts will discuss the challenges and emerging agents for the treatment of sickle cell disease. I'm Dr. Neil Minkoff, the Chief Medical Officer and Founder of Fountainhead Healthcare in Sudbury, Massachusetts. Joining me today on this very distinguished panel are Dr. Maria Lopes, Chief Medical Director at AMC Health in New York, New York, John Stansel, Pharmacy Director in the Division of Health Benefits at the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services in Raleigh, North Carolina, and Dr. Amar Zaidi, Pediatric Hematologist Oncologist in the Comprehensive Sickle Cell Center at the Children's Hospital of Michigan in Detroit, Michigan. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's begin. So I was hoping that we could begin by just creating an overview so that we're all on the same page and to make sure that those who are joining us are all on the same page about sickle cell disease and the differences between that and sickle cell trait. So Amar, could you go over some of that to help us be grounded in this discussion? Absolutely, Neil. So sickle cell disease is a disorder of hemoglobin which affects the beta globin subunit of hemoglobin. It's caused by an amino acid substitution that makes hemoglobin more likely to polymerize in states when it's deoxygenated. The disease requires the inheritance of a gene from both mom and dad for you to have the full pathophysiologic uh, effect. Sickle cell disease is an umbrella term that includes the inheritance, of course, of a sickle hemoglobin gene, but also the inheritance of either another sickle hemoglobin gene or an alternate hemoglobin that can interact with a sickle hemoglobin molecule. Sickle cell trait is the term we use to describe somebody who's only inherited one abnormal sickle hemoglobin gene from one parent and is relatively a benign uh, state. What's the, uh, how often does that happen in terms of the predisposition of the two different variations? The variation where there's one type of hemoglobin binding with another type. Um, as far, how often does that happen as far as? The different, how, the comparison between sickle cell trait versus sickle cell disease. Got it, okay. So as far as incidence goes, uh, Neil, the, uh, the relative incidence of sickle cell disease in the United States as a whole is about 100,000 to 200,000 in that range. When we talk about the inheritance of trait amongst African Americans, which is the most largely affected population of individuals, we say that about one in 13 African American births will have sickle cell trait, and about one in 365 will have disease. Okay. Is there, I'm gonna move over to you, Maria, and ask if that's consistent with what you've seen as a payer, and you've done some work with national payers, and if you've seen a geographic distribution pattern. Well, I think as um, uh, Amar pointed out, uh, this is most prevalent in the African-American population, Latinos, uh, for dealing with beta, thou, maybe a different uh, you know, population. But obviously, I think one of the challenges as payers is we may not be really um, recording, if you will, who has sickle cell trait, right? So we don't really know how big the denominator is, and that's part of the challenge. Many times we're reactive to claims or case management or triggers that are leading up to, say, a transplant request, or now you have somebody in the ER, the, what we call the frequent flyers, and that's how we often identify them. So I think there's some missed opportunity, perhaps early on, to not only identify these patients through claims data, but then um, opportunities, I think, in terms of best practices to connect them to more comprehensive care and to, um, as we think about African-American populations and minorities, um, and as we think about social determinants of health, what is it that we can do, back to the geographic variation, rural locations, what is it that we can do to improve access uh, to care? John, do you have anything to add to that? Our Medicaid program provides health care services to about 2.3 million beneficiaries. Of those, about 4,000 uh, beneficiaries 
21 years or younger have sickle cell disease, and approximately three, uh, I'm sorry, 3,000 have, uh, are 21 or under, and approximately 4,000 are adult beneficiaries. And it's certainly more prevalent in the southeast, and so in our population, if there's about 100,000 sickle cell disease patients, we represent about 7% of that population. And how is that affecting your economic burden? I mean, it's driving costs. It's, it's, it's certainly driving costs, and, and those costs increase as beneficiaries get older and their disease progresses. Um, approximately uh, for the under 21 population, about $7 million is spent um, in 2018 on prescription cost or medication cost and 14 or almost 15 million dollars for the medical cost which is mainly hospitalizations and ED visits. Um, as the patient ages or gets older and becomes an adult those prescription costs increase to nearly 11 million dollars and their medical costs increase to almost 30 million dollars. And across how many patients was that again? That's uh, approximately 7,000 patients. That's a big. There's a, actually a recent article in NISPOR, The Value in Health, that estimates that the economic burden to the U.S. in total is about $2.98 billion. And this may be underestimated. 57% <clears throat> of which is hospitalizations or ER related, um, the rest being outpatient. So there's certainly a lot of um, economic burden, if you will, in terms of what's happening and the lifelong journey these patients have.